In this tutorial, we're going to be looking at layers. Layers are already the way that we can manage our 2D data. So what are layers? Layers are a system to help you organize your 2D data when creating and designing in the software. So the things that you can typically put on a layer are vectors or images, like you can see here, uh, dimensions, and 3D component grayscales. But the 3D component grayscales, those are for Aspire and VCarve only. So what are the main uses for layers? Well, really they're actually designed to make our life a lot easier. And so items on a layer can be hidden or undrawn in order for you to simplify the data within the projects. So you can see here, I've got my layers here. If I go over to my layers tab here, I can turn off the layers for the individual parts of my project. And you can see I've got them assigned a different color. So green here for the text, purple for the drill holes, red for the slots, and blue for the cutout. And another great thing about layers is you can actually use it for some automation. So you can see here I've got some toolpaths here and they're actually associated with different layers. So in terms of automating some machining tasks across similar parts, you can do this. And there's an example of this in the job template video, which I highly recommend that you check out. But for now, let's have a look at some facts about layers. Now, at any specific moment, you cannot have uh, one object, for example, a vector that lies on two different layers. A single object can only exist on one single layer. And when you create a new object, it will automatically be placed on the current active layer, which is identified using the bold text. So you can see here, if I click this one, this is in bold, so that is now the active layer. And editing an object will not change its current layer unless the operation creates a new object, which is placed onto the active layer. For example, if we had a vector and that was on layer one, and we were currently on layer two, if we wanted to offset that vector on layer one, it will create that vector onto the active layer. And finally, 2D toolpath previews are not assigned to a layer, but visibility can be seen over here by selecting these toolpaths, you can turn them on in the toolpath menu there as well. So how are new layers created? Well, when you first open the software, the software will automatically create a layer called layer one. Now, if you wanted to add in a new layer, you can simply go ahead and click up here and choose add new layer. Or if you go down to the bottom left here in the layers tab, you can click on add new layer. Similarly, you can click on a vector and you can right mouse click it after selecting it. So let's just select it, right mouse click and go to copy to layer and a new layer and you can move to layer new layer. So that's a couple of different ways you can create new layers. And then also you can bring it in a bitmap into the software and the software will create it on its own layer and it'll be the top of the list here. So the bitmap will have its own dedicated layer there as well. But for now, let's look at a different example. If you were to bring in a vector file, for example, if you imported a DXF file or a DWG or SKP file, which has layers saved in them, then those software will recreate the layers within the layer manager. So you can see up here, all the layers have been respected and brought in from my DXF here. And if you were to import a PDF, for example, then it will create a separate layer for each page within the document. And if I'm working with an EPS or AI file, which doesn't have any layer information, the software will create a single layer with the same name as the imported file. And then we're working with certain operations in the software, for example, with dimensions. You'll notice that the option here for the bottom here where place dimension on its own layer, so you can create a dimension, for example, the length of this vector here, and then it will place that dimension uh, statement on to its own separate layer. And the same applies for the vector texture tool, where it will automatically create a layer if using one of these processes. And then when working with Pro Software or Aspire, there's also various different functions that will also create layers. For example, when using the plate production tool, creating zero planes, and when slicing models, these will also create new layers. So what's the best way to make use of layers? Well, there's no real right or wrong way to use layers. It's really just there so you can manage your layers and you can make your life a little bit easier by uh, organizing your layers in the projects. But you don't have to use layers at all. You don't have to use it. But even simple projects will often benefit from using them. And if you want to see some examples of how layers are used, they're actually used extensively throughout our tutorial video. So I highly recommend you look at some of the other tutorial videos that we have uh, because they'll often feature layers and how you can use them in really interesting ways. But for now, what we're going to do is have a look at a brand new file. So let's come up to File and Close. And then what we can do is create a new file. And then we're going to make this one 10 by 10 one inch thick, don't need to worry about these settings for now, and click OK. So let's go to our layer management on the top right. So you can see here we've got the layer one, which is the default layer the software will open with and create when you open up a new job. So you'll always have a layer one. And you can see we can turn that layer on or off using this icon on the left here. You can change the color of it using this icon here. It's currently set to black. We have a page icon, which is blank, but if you had any vectors on this layer, they would be represented on this page icon, but currently it's blank because there's nothing on that layer. We have the layer name, and then to the right of it, we have this menu here, which gives you more options in which to organize your layers. So you can play around with these, but we'll cover these a little bit later on, and then we can add in a new layer. Now, another way you can manage your layers is the menu over here. So we go to the tab from our design tab into layers, 
and we have further options here. So what we can do here is if we had multiple layers, we can actually organize them by pressing the up and down arrow keys to move them up and down as needed to organize them in a list. We can also actually left mouse click on the layers tab just here and we're holding it down. We can drag out the layers menu and now we have it here accessible. So if you want to use it on your worksheet while you're working on some vectors, you can do. Now this pin icon means it's currently pinned to where it is, but if you unpin that, what will happen is if I click now on the worksheet, it automatically collapses the layers uh, visibility and if I pin it again it will always be active and on there and if we want to put this back in all we have to do is left mouse click drag it across the top here and we can let go and we can pop it back on to our design tab so with that covered let's have a look at changing and manipulating our layer shall we so if you come into the layers tab here you can click on this and you'll notice now it's highlighted the layer name because I can now change it so I can put a new layer for example and then I can click in the empty space here and the change will take effect you can actually also change the name by right mouse clicking here and choosing rename. You can also do it from this menu here by left mouse clicking and choosing rename. So for example, I can call this one border vectors and again, left mouse click and the change will take effect. Now currently we don't have any vectors to work with. So let's look at changing that. Let's go over to the design tab and we're gonna look at creating our first vector. So let's go to the 3D view and let's go to draw a rectangle. I'm gonna make an eight by eight rectangle here. Click create, so there's our square. And if we go back to our layers tab, you can turn the visibility off and on, and you'll notice that we've also got some vectors on what once was a blank page because the software knows we've now got vectors on this layer. Now you notice that the border vectors is in bold because it means that is the active layer. So when the active layer is on, that means the text will be bold. And if I turn off that layer, it goes red. So software is warning us here that we're the visibility of this layer is now off. So what would happen if I were to draw some vectors on a layer where the visibility is off but is active? Well, let's have a look. If I grab this circle tool here, and I drag out a circle and let go. What happens is the software recognizes that this is the currently active layer. So it switches on the visibility for that layer and it draws a circle on it, but we've also got the uh, square in the background as well now visible because this is the active layer. So if you had multiple uh, layers in a sheet, you could have it not visible, but if it's the active layer and you draw on the worksheet, then the vectors will go onto that active layer. So now let's look at adding in a new layer. So we can do this multiple ways. We can click on add a new layer in the bottom left. We can right mouse click on here and click insert new layer. We can also do it from this menu here. So we just click on that insert new layer and I'll get the option to name it. So I'm gonna call this one star. And if I click in here, it activates it. And you can see that's the active layer because it's in bold. And if I wanna make the other layer active, I can just click on it and it makes it the active layer. But I'm gonna make this one my active layer for now. I'm gonna to go to the design tab because we're actually gonna add in a star. So let's delete our circle, get rid of that go to our star tool here, I'm going to create a five point star, click create, it's in the middle of our job. Now let's have a look at the options for our layer here. So let's go over to our layers tab again. So you can see with the star here, we've got it as the active layer and you can see I can turn the visibility off and on. And how do you know which vector is on which layer? Well, obviously we know which layers have which vectors on, but if you didn't know, you can double left mouse click on the page icon here and it will select the vector on that layer. I can do it for the borders as well. And if you key, keep an eye on the bottom right of the software here, you'll notice it says on the very bottom right hand uh, side, it says border vectors when we have that layer selected and we can do the same for the star and it represents that in the bottom right here. If we follow the mouse pointer over here in the bottom right there. Now let's look at some of the differentiators between the layers. So we're gonna look at colors now. So if you come up to our star here, you can notice we've got this box here next to it and we can change the color by left mouse clicking it and we can choose a color here. And if you want more colors, you can choose this option here. If none of these take your fancy or if you just want some more colors. But in this case, I'm gonna go for gold. And you can see now if I just click off the worksheet, my star is now gold. And that also means that any other vectors I create on this layer will be gold. It also shows it up here in our layers manager in the view. You can see here that the option here is gold next to our star so it indicates that any vectors on that layer are gold so if i go to the design tab and i create a circle let's just make a small circle up top here if i just make a very small circle because it's on this layer because it's the active layer it is now in gold and so what we can do now is have a look at moving or copying this vector to another layer so let's click on that vector there let's right mouse click and we've got the option here to copy to a new layer so we can go to either the borders layer or to a new layer entirely uh, and we've got the option here to move so we can move layer so we can go to border vectors or a new layer. I'm gonna click on new layer and we get this dialog box. I'm gonna call this one circle. I'm gonna change the color to blue. I'm gonna make sure that the new layer is visible so I can turn it invisible if I want to. And I'm also gonna make sure it's active so that any of the vectors that are now going to be created going forward will be on this active layer because it is the active layer. So let's click okay. 
And you'll notice at the top now, the uh, list has changed to show that the circle is the active layer because that is the active layer. We just set that in the menu and you can see it's in bold there as well. Now we've just demonstrated how creating any new objects will go onto the current active layer. However, when you're working uh, with creating copies or you're working with a layout type function such as linear and circular array options, all the new copies will actually be created on the existing original layer, not the active layer. So let's have a look at this. So for example, if I go to the layers tab and I make my star layer the active layer, if I now go over to the view here and I click onto the circle and I hold control, and I drag out another circle over here, you'll notice that the color of it is blue. It's still on that circle layer because it is a copy created from that original layer. Similarly, if I go to the design tab and I go to the array or the circular copy tool, you'll notice that if I select this circle here and I create 20 of these, let's copy that. If I click off here, you'll notice they're all blue because again, they're copies of that vector. And even though we're on the star layer, they have been copied onto the circle layer because that is where the original copy originated from. So that's the difference between creating a new set of vectors uh, or copying vectors on your layers. But let's just control Z that for now and that copy and we'll return to our star and circle. Now there is an exception to that rule. If we go over to the design tab and go to the offset tool here, we're gonna select our circle. We're gonna choose offset and we're gonna offset outwards by 0.25 and we'll click offset. And you'll notice this time if I close out the tool, the circle that's offset is in gold because the star layer is the active layer, but because it's created a new vector, it's offset it onto that star layer. Whereas if I show you again, if I create a copy, even though the star layer is the active layer, if I click on this again to enter transform mode, hold control and drag out another circle over here, it is in blue because it's a copy of the original vector on that layer. So now what we're gonna do is we're going to look at how we can group and ungroup objects and how that works with multiple vectors on multiple layers. So I'm just gonna select our vectors by left mouse clicking and dragging a box and this will select any of the vectors that touch the box here. So I've got my circles here that are on different layers. We've got the gold one on the star layer and the other two on the circles layer. If I right mouse click, I can choose to now group them and notice what happens here, they've all gone gold. And that's because the currently active layer is the star layer. And so what happens is when you group that all together, they go onto the currently active layer. So let's look at ungrouping these vectors. So if I click onto our group here, uh, if I right mouse click and I go to ungroup, we've got two options. We've got ungroup onto original object layers and we've got ungroup onto the groups layer. Now if I ungroup onto groups layer, what will happen here is we'll ungroup it to where the vectors were grouped to. And if you recall, that was onto the star layer. Whereas if I ungroup back onto the original object layers, what will happen is that because the software knows the original layer for the circle vectors that were in blue was the circle layer, it will ungroup them back onto that layer while taking our offset vector back onto a star layer because that is where they originally came from, so their original layers. So if I click on that, you'll notice we've got our circles back in blue from the circle layer and our offset vector on the star layer. Now what if we wanted to delete some layer information? Well, what we can do is we can select our layer, so we can go over here and make the circle the active layer, and I'll right mouse click it. And if I go to delete, I get several delete options. And if I go to delete this, for example, you'll notice I get a dialog box and it says, this is the layer you wanna delete, but it's got data on it. So what do you wanna do with this data? Do you wanna move it to another layer? So borders or, or star? Or do you want to delete this data outright? So you get the option to move that data if you want to onto another layer if you want to keep that. But in this case, I don't want to keep any of that data. So I'm gonna click delete data, click okay. And now you'll notice we've only got the star and the border vector layers left. Now we're gonna look at some other options for layering here, but to do that, we're gonna insert a new layer. So let's go to right click, insert a new layer. We're gonna call this one layer one. I'm just gonna put it down in the list here and I'm gonna keep it active. I'm gonna go back to the design tab going to create a new star so click create and you'll notice that you can't see the gold star underneath anymore which is the one on the star layer and the reason for that is because of where this layer is currently placed because it is underneath this in the list it's taking prominence so how do we change that well if i click on this layer here and i choose to move it up you'll notice now the star on the star layer which is in gold now is showing up so this is just a way to demonstrate how your layer ordering can matter and how it can show you uh, your vectors setting on uh, different layers depending on how you've ordered your list. 
So with that covered, let's look at some of the other options in our layers. So let's come up to our layers list here. And what we can do is we can make the star the active layer. And we can actually do that a couple of ways. So we can click on that to make it the active layer. But we can also click this menu here and click on activate, which will make it the active layer. If I do it with this one, for example, you'll notice how now that's the active layer. And then we can also go for the options here and go to show and show this or show only this. So if I click show only this, you'll notice how the other layers have been made invisible and only the star layer is going to be shown. You can see it on 3D view here as well. You can show all but this and it will show every layer but the star layer. So you can see here in the layers list, it is now the one that is not visible and you can show all. And similarly, if you come to the top left here, if you click on this icon here, you can turn off all the layers or turn them all back on again with a click of a button. We can also hide just this layer and we can also hide all layers and again, turn them back on. And then we have the option here to lock a layer. Now what this will do is it locks it so that I can't now edit that layer. I can't, you can see here, I'm trying to click on this offset circle and I can't do anything to it, I can't select it. This is really handy because if you've got multiple layers and you're working with a, quite, quite a complex design where you need to not edit certain vectors, you can lock that layer down. And if you wanna unlock it, you can just click here and click unlock. Then we have the option to insert a new layer. So let's insert a couple of these, shall we? So let's have a look at these. And then after that, we have the option to delete those layers. So we can delete this particular layer. We can delete the visible layer. We can delete the invisible layers. We can delete the empty layers. Now you notice that these three all have blank pages, so they're empty layers. So watch what happens when I click delete, delete empty. It gets rid of all the layers that have nothing on them. So that's really handy if you've got some layers that you've moved vectors from and they no longer have any information on them. You can get rid of them nice and easy. Then if we come back up, we can rename a layer as we did earlier. So you can click on rename. We can call this whatever we want to. So we can rename that layer if we want to. You can also just click on the layer twice and you can rename it that way or right mouse click and rename that way as well. And then we have the option to select layer vectors. So if I click on the border vectors here, I can select the vectors on that layer. If I go up to the star, for example, I can do that as well. And I can also, as earlier demonstrated, we can click on the page to select the vectors on that layer as well. And then finally, we have this option here to merge the visible vectors. And what that will do is we'll merge all the visible vectors that you can see onto one layer. So let's click that and see what happens. You notice now we're left with one layer, the star layer, and the vectors from all the other layers have been placed onto this one layer. So that's now all on that one layer. So that now completes this guide on layer management and you'll see how we use layers and manage them throughout many of the tutorials that are available with the software. But I hope you've enjoyed this video and we look forward to seeing you in the next video.